Okay, okay, I'm recording. Yes, it's recording now. Right? Okay, uh, so um, uh, that's my two lectures in success will be about the history and physical examination in pediatric patients. So when you start to take in history, you should take all the following informations that may help you to reach the diagnosis, like feeding difficulties, poor weight gain, irritability, excess crying, bluish extremities, excessive perspiration, mean there is excess sweating, wheezing, noisy labored breathing, so they have a noisy uh, breathing, uh, frequent respiratory tract infection. Um, like in, for example, in ASD, you see frequent upper respiratory infection. And in other cases like uh, VSD and TOF, we will have frequent, uh, we will have frequent lower respiratory infection. Um, oliguria, in some case like, for example, neonatal coarctation, AS, hypoplastic Leopard syndrome, all those uh, cases. Um, there will be breathlessness. Uh, 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 there will be, um, let's, uh, let's read everybody, yes. Um, uh, fatigue, um, come in. Uh, fatigue and weaknesses, uh, cough, uh, chest pain, chest pain like in case of AS, fatigue and weaknesses in all kinds of congenital heart defect, especially when you have a low output patients. Um, just uh, to uh, try to mute your mics uh, to make me, uh, let's mute everybody. Um, mute, no. Mute all, yes. Mute all, yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, mute, okay. Um, then uh, uh, swelling of feet, which is a little bit uh, rare and especially seen in more bigger kids. Joint pain associated with, for example, a case of rheumatic fever uh, associated uh, with uh, joint involvement. Painful swelling in the finger and pulse, like in case of infective endocarditis, you can, you can feel a swelling uh, in the extreme part of the body, which is a finger pulse. Syncope, like in case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, AS, DS, quark, any obstructive lesion, even MS and TS. Involuntary movement, like in rheumatic uh, cardiac uh, cases, so involvement of neurology plus cardiac. Hemoptosis, like in case of the pulmonary hypertension, mitral uh, congenital mitral stenosis or acquired mitral stenosis and uh, AS also. So all these findings uh, should be an, uh, very carefully evaluated when you are taking a history of congenital heart patients. Uh, so the, now the question comes to your mind, is this case is congenital or acquired? So congenital, the symptoms usually from infancy, but it's not a must. We have some cases like uh, we, we, we have uh, symptoms later on without being presented in infancy. Uh, feeding difficulty, this is one of the, uh, although causing failure to thrive. So if it's causing, causing failure to thrive since early infancy, that's most probably going with congenital one. Recurrent hospital admissions that usually with uh, congenital uh, cardiac diseases, uh, uh, which is usual with them. But the acquired one, now previously rheumatic fever was very common. 
uh, commonly seen. So they will present with fever, joint pain, chorea, but now it's very rare. Although there are sporadic cases, but uh, on or, uh, uh, the, the occurrence of the rheumatic fever is extremely rare now. Uh, but Kawasaki is now the major acquired heart disease uh, in which on the base of symptomatology we will diagnose them and eventually we will send for uh, 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 echocardiography for cardiac involvement. Okay. Okay, so now, now the question comes to your mind. Is this case is uh, it's cyanotic uh, or acyanotic? So why cyanosis happen? So cyanosis happen because of desaturation. And there will be, there, there is a term called clinical cyanosis, meaning the SAT below 85, and in some books it's 87. So between 85 and 95, there is cyanosis, but it's not called clinical cyanosis. It's like pulse oximeter. So above 95 is normal. What kind of cyanosis we have, the blue discoloration uh, happen in two places, where the places which is related to central one, it's a central type of uh, cyanosis. It happens with the um, tongue and internal part of mucosa in the mouth but in the lips outside and the extremities, it's a kind of peripheral cyanosis and it's not a must to be associated with the central. Uh, the question comes, uh, the third question comes in your mind, which one is present uh, in cyanotic congenital heart disease? For sure, it should be central one. So when you have a cyanotic congenital heart disease, we should have a central type. And how to differentiate this kind of sinus, as I told you, you should look for the side of its occurrence and you should relate them to the causes of uh, heart defects. Okay, if I'm going deep with it, uh, how, what's, what are the mechanism of central cyanosis and what's the mechanism of peripheral cyanosis? Uh, the, uh, uh, the central science is diminished whole blood sat, but in the peripheral, which is, the, is related to flow, it's not the sat. Um, the side, uh, as I told you, uh, it's usual and everybody should know. And there will be clubbing and polycythemia, usually associated with central, but not associated with peripheral. The temperature, usually, with the central is warm, but in the peripheral is cold. Uh, called peripheries, uh, I mean. Uh, local heat will relieve the peripheral one, but cannot relieve the cy central cyanosis. And if you give pure oxygen, the cyanosis decrease here, but when the peripheral cyanos, cyanosis will persist because it's a local, local kind of uh, uh, devascularization. Okay, so if, if we are going to uh, talk about what kind of defects is cyanotic and what kind of defects are acyanotic, let's start with the cyanotic congenital heart defects. We have two groups of cyanotic congenital heart disease. One is a group where there is decreased pulmonary blood flow. So when you, you are decreasing the flow to the pulmonary system, that happens with tetralogy of follow, because there is PS, tricuspid atresia, where there is narrowing of the uh, outflow through the right side outflow, I mean, through the restrictive VSD, that kind of tricuspid atresia. Because if um, I'm, I'm going detail with the tricuspid atresia, it, will, it has... Uh, uh, eight subtypes of tricuspid, but the usual one is that one with a cyanosis. Put it in your mind. There are a kind of tricuspid atresia with 
uh, for example, heart failure, and we have a kind with shock and etc. But they are rare. Uh, transposition of great arteries, as usual, they are transposed, so that's why the, uh, there will be desaturation of the blood. It's not, uh, uh, so in that case, uh, you will have less flow to the pulmonary system, uh, but not almost always, uh, because we have a transposition with pulmonary hypertension. Uh, and there, there is a single ventricle with PS. So in, if you have a single ventricle with PS, you will have decreased blood flow. In case we increase blood flow, we have a trunk as arteriosis, and, or, although they are cyanotic, but increasing blood flow. So in that case, because you have one trunk uh, giving blood, because it's a mixed blood, that's why it's this, uh, they are desaturated, but the blood goes to the pulmonary system in a huge amount. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return, that's usual because all the pulmonary veins draining to the, to the right of the heart, where it's mixed with the systemic venous draining, and then there will be desaturation of that blood mixing, and then both mixed blood goes to the both system, and that eventually leading to the cyanosis. And in that case, you have increased blood flow because you have unprotected pulmonary circulation. And we have single ventricle without PS. In that case, you have increased blood flow, but with uh, cyanosis. And so accordingly, how can you differentiate these two groups? Uh, we have uh, so many steps to go through. One, uh, you start with the clinical base, I mean, on murmur base. So uh, the murmur will differentiate both group of uh, cases, if not, uh, go to the heart sounds, first and second heart sound, and if not, then you have investigations. Investigation in the form of ECG, chest x-ray, and then echocardiography, and even you may need catheterization. So in that case, you categorize your patient accordingly, and you plan to treat them accordingly. Then if you if you are looking for acyanotic congenital heart disease patients, then we have two group of patients. One group is the, uh, the group that uh, there is an overloaded uh, ventricle. In that case, you have a lot shunt. In case like in ASD, atrioceptal defect, VSD, ventricle septal defect, and patent dexterous arteriosis. In, in, in all three cases, we have um, increased flow to the lungs but when you have a pressure overloaded that's a volume overload volume means you have a lot of blood going but in pressure overload is different we have something narrowing the outflow that make the pressure inside the ventricle to be overestimated so in that case or overloaded so in case of ps on stenosis aortic stenosis and coarctation so in all these patients we will have a pressure loaded ventricle. And for sure, clinically and on investigation basis, you can differentiate both groups. Okay, uh, although uh, rheumatic heart disease is not so common here in our community, uh, now Kawasaki become more prevalent. So you should uh, know what structure in the heart involved in acquired heart disease. For example, in rheumatic heart disease, which valve, so that's why, that's your goal, which valve you should look for in case of rheumatic heart disease. For sure, it's a mitral valve. Then the second is aortic valve. Then the third is pulmonary valve, and the fourth is tricuspid valve. So all valves should be looked at, but first of all, you should look uh, to the uh, 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 the mitral valve. And if there is any evidence of pericarditis and myocarditis, how can you detect? Pericarditis, uh, it's a thickening of the pericardium with plus minus fluid, ac fluid ac accumulation. Or in case of myocarditis, so myocardium involved, in that case, you may have myocardial dysfunction, thinning of the myocardium, and ECG change with that. So Accordingly, you can diagnose on the base of that. That's with the rheumatic heart disease. 
But if you have a Kawasaki patient, the Kawasaki patient, what you are looking for is a coronaries. So left main stem, left uh, branches, uh, cerc branches, and, and also the uh, right coronary artery and uh, associated with then myocardial dysfunction and also other in, uh, visual involvement. Um, so how they complicate congenital heart disease, how they complicate. So either they become congestive heart failure or infected. And if half of them infected because they are disfigured because of congenital defects, and because of the congenital, you may face a case with pulmonary hypertension. So they will present to you either with failure or infection or pulmonary hypertension. So that's a nice uh, uh, criteria. If I'm approaching a patient with a heart failure patient, uh, I, do, I do use this criteria. That's used with the pediatric patient. In, and in, if I'm going deep more further, you see how we have a criteria for heart failure in adult. And now with this criteria for adult also slightly modified. So this, so if, if I'm looking to, we either uh, we have major criteria and minor criteria. Also for kids, we have major criteria and minor criteria. We should have for adult, that's the uh, Framingham uh, criteria for adult, which mean, even for adolescent uh, in our group of patients, we should have two major criteria and one major, two minor criteria. That's the uh, uh, Framingham uh, criteria in which we, have, we should have two major, either paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, orthopnea, elevated JVP, cryptation, third heart sound, radiological evidence of cardiomegaly, and radiological evidence of pulmonary edema. Or we may have minor criteria, which is extreme edema, night cough, exertional dyspnea, hepatomegaly, and pleural effusion, and a heart rate more than, uh, um, more than 120 and loss of weight more than uh, 4.5 in five days. That's when they are on diuretic bridging. When you admit them, they will have loss of weight. So that's the uh, Framingham uh, criteria for adult and adults and patients that we involve with them. But for kids, I will go back. For kids, it's the same, same but uh, here I put it for the comparison. So if I'm looking to the uh, NADAS criteria, which is for kids specifically, we have uh, major criteria or minor criteria. In major criteria, we have systolic murmur, grade three and above, okay? The minor is against, below two, two and below. So, and when, there, when you have diastolic murmur, okay? When you have cyanosis, when you have signs of congestive heart failure, all these four, that's major. If you have one of them, that's it. Uh, that's it. That's the diagnostic criteria for uh, heart failure. And then minor criteria, when you have systolic grading less than the two and less, abnormal second heart sound in the form of loudness and something like that. Abnormal ECG finding, like in case, for example, ASD, VSD, et cetera. Uh, abnormal chest x-ray in form of one of the forms or abnormal blood pressure like the case of coarctation. So if you have two of this minor group or one of the major group, that means there is a presence of the uh, uh, heart disease in kids, but in adults it's a different. So that's why you should have, uh, you should have idea about both because you are dealing with adults and patients. Then uh, uh, the perinatal history, um, that's uh, very easy. I know, I know you, everybody knows, but I should, you should concentrate what, what things in the history is important for us as a cardiology department. So either the ma mother is uh, immunized against rubella prior to the delivery, was the mother scanned antenatally, and if there was a fever and rash in the first trimester and painful swelling behind the ear. So all these indicating the viral illness. So uh, there are so many maternal conditions that affecting 
uh, 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 congenital heart disease patients, either uh, diabetic, uh, diabetes, which the majority causing transposition of great arteries, although it's causing VSD frequently, PDA and HAC. And you should uh, really thoroughly uh, believe on diabetes that we have two kinds of diabetes. We have a pre-gestational diabetes that's causing all these pathologies, but gestational diabetes causing these la the last two pathologies more commonly than transposition and VSD. So in case of gestational diagnosis, di diabetes, we have HACM with PDA, but with the pre-gestational di diabetes, we have PGA and VSD. In case of SLE, you know, uh, uh, it affects conduct conduction system and causing congenital heart block. Um, in final ketonuria patient, although we have very little ladies with that, uh, um, uh, uh, so uh, causing TOF, VSD, ASD, PDA, and CAR, CAR patient. If, uh, uh, if we are uh, uh, talking about the drugs causing uh, congenital defects, it's a sodium valproid, uh, so the long list of drugs causing, and uh, uh, you should uh, 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 identify the causative, uh, causative one. Um, the, so the postnatal history is very important for our patients. Neonatal cyanosis, if there was neonatal cyanosis, if there was breathing difficulties, there was feeding problems, or there was delayed growth. Those, the, those findings should be very thoroughly investigated. Family history, very important, as you know, consanguinity, maternal age at conception, because it's related to the uh, 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 so many uh, 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 chromosomal and other problems with the ovulation and age of the father also related like 20 percent increase in children born with the father more than that's the new findings by american academy of cardiology um heart disease in the family for sure you have increased risk hereditary disease like noonan syndrome so P ps will be common with noonan uh, rheumatic fever although it's rare here and diabetic mother some dysmorphic features associated uh, uh, congenital heart defects. Uh, it's uh, aligned here, Down syndrome, like uh, that causing uh, AV AVSD and uh, VSD, Edward, VSD most commonly, Patau, VSD more, most commonly, Nunan, PS, Marfan, AR and MVP, Turnal coarctation by cuspid aortic valve, AS and ASD, Holt Oram syndrome, ASD, which is usually is this primer. Um, clubbing may be found in the infective endocarditis and cyanotic congenital heart disease. Edema, usually, or the pedal or sacral, uh, which is restrictive or several severe tricuspid valve disease. Sweating of the forehead, which is usually uh, seen with uh, problems with the heart, and chest and spine deformities that associated with congenital heart defects, skin manifestation of the disease related to the heart and pallor. Pallor may be prosthetic valve, infective endocarditis, all associated with. Okay, um, now I'm going to anthropometric uh, measures that related to the uh, uh, patient's uh, uh, weight, height, and OFC. Usually weight, is affected by heart failure patients. So VSD, for example, a cyanotic patient causing her weight uh, uh, or failure to thrive. But cyanotic one more doing that on long basis because you know cyanotic patient mean it's a long it's a long process, not like conge uh, congestive heart failure. You may control with the medication in case of congestive heart failure, but cyanotic one is not. Uh, weight might increase due to edema. So sometimes when you start medication, the weight comes down. Uh, height associated, so either short or tall, uh, uh, associated with, and we can go detail with it. Okay, 
when I finished my history taking and I, I'm, I, I was very oriented to everything around, then I'm starting cardiovascular after anthropometric measures. So I start uh, very important with the uh, most important is the pulse, uh, blood pressure should be taken, JVP, and inspection of pericordium. You know, um, uh, I'm going with the detail of the procedures, but these things is very important. Although, for example, JVP is not so important with pediatric patients, but it's important with adolescents. Uh, blood pressure almost always important. Pulse, I will go thoroughly through it through the lecture later on. And uh, an inspection of pericordium is so important. So uh, you should look for deformity, the chest shape, trachea is it deviated, physical peri uh, visible pericordial bulge and visible pulsations anywhere in the chest, scar of the disease of the of the uh, 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 previously operated patients or scar of other uh, surgeries, dilated veins and sinuses. So then uh, I do palpate the EPX bit, the parasternal heave and throat. So all, always I'm telling if you are looking for four things in the chest, which is deformity, pulsation, scar and discoloration, you will be, uh, you will cover everything. And when you palpate for three things, which is apex beat, heaving, and thrill, you will finish with the palpation. Percussion is not important. Auscultation is so important, and I will go very thoroughly through it. Um, uh, so we have 10 minutes left. Uh, I cannot finish it, but I will go uh, through the pulse now. Uh, pulse is very important to be checked in cardio, relate to cardiovascular. That's why I'm so concentrating on it. A pulse is a waveform that's felt by the fingers, you know, produced during cardiac cycle, which travels all the way arterial tree and the rate much faster than that of the blood flow. So if you look to the pulse timing after cardiac beating, uh, for example, in the carotid, in 30, 30 milliseconds, it reaches there, but for example, radial will be in 80. And femoral, so radio femoral nearly the same time. Okay. Then what I am going to go through is that all these uh, 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 things relate, related, to the, related to the pulse. Uh, so I should look for the pulse everywhere, like in radial, brachial, carotid, temporal, femoral, pop popliteal, those heart beats. And also I should compare it to the apical impulses. Uh, but usually with kids, small kids, we are not doing carotid. We are, we are doing radial and brachial usually, plus femoral and those heart beats. So the pulse rate, as you know, it's different uh, from one age to other. So, uh, so that's the case with pediatric patients. And when you have tachycardia, you may suspect you have arrhythmia or failure or a case with fever, kind of fever. If you have a bradycardia, either you have two or either it's a complete block or sick sinus syndrome. And there's a problem with the sinus itself. Uh, so, so you go through, that was the pulse, then the uh, 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 rate, and then the rhythm. When usually you have a regular rhythm, but if you have regularly irregular rhythm, that means sinus arrhythmia, sinus arrhythmia. And if you have irregular irregularity rhythm, that means the Arterial fibrillation or flutter. Usually, when adolescent fibrillation is common, but with the pediatric age, it's a flutter. And flutter may be either three to one or two to one block. So when you see a flutter, you see, for example, uh, a, 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 like a arterial rate of the 300 and ventricular rate of, of, of uh, 100. 
So in that case, you have three to one. And if you have 300 to 150, that's two to one. Uh, and, and, and really, I'm going through all these irregularities by ECG, but here on the, on, on the base of the rate that I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, then the volume of the pulse. The volume, either the volume, uh, uh, you, you, you assess the volume where? In the carotid artery, usually. But in small creatures, uh, babies, uh, I mean, Brachial is the optimal, so like in neonate and infancy, it's the uh, uh, brachial artery. And in femoral also, if there was no blocking or, or coarctation associated. But most accurately, how you know the pulse volume is a pulse pressure. And what's the definition of pulse pressure? Is the, is the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure. So you have systole, for example, 90, and diastole 65. So the difference is 25. So that's the pulse pressure. So if you have pulse pressure between 30 and 60, that's normal volume pulse, volume pulse. But if you have less than 30, you have low volume pulse. If you have more than 60, difference between systole and diastole, for example, you have, um, let's say 100 over 30. So that's a, uh, high volume pulse, like in case of PDA. So I will go to, uh, through them also. So if you have a large volume pulse, mean you have either AR, you have PDA, or you have AV fistula, or persistent trunk arteriosus. So all these uh, uh, pathologies causing large bounding pulse. But if you have small volume one, small, uh, or it's called 3D, 3D or weak pulse in case of congestive heart failure, pericardial effusion, constrictive pericarditis, and coarctation. So in lower limb, you will feel very 3D weak pulsation. If I am going more deep with the character of the pulse, uh, so here, which is the uh, which is the usual way by the carotid artery should be done in small creatures, as I told you, by the brachial artery. So if you, if you see, we have a, a dichrotic pulse here. So you have a two-wave, let's say, pulse. Uh, it's a percussion wave and dichrotic notch. So, so that's the systole, and then the, there will be a last flow to the, uh, that's the do 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 to the, um, uh, uh, let's say it's an artery uh, recoiling uh, pressure. So that's the dichrotic notch. So usually with the pulse, uh, we'll see like this. Then if, if you have a hypokinetic pulse, what happens with the hypokinetic pulse? There will be, it's a small weak pulse, small volume and narrow pulse pressure. So in that case, we have a narrow pulse pressure and small volume. So uh, that happens with the cardiac failure, shock, AS, MS. So anything obstructing the outflow or uh, an inflow, also again, because the LV is not filled well, like in case of MS, congenital MS, is, although it's very rare, but AS is so common in PDI, especially in UNA. They will present with very 3D, uh, thing. Now we have, today we have one case in uh, Shar Hospital, I diagnosed at noon. Uh, it's a case of AS and there's another case with coarctation. If you want to check for that pulse, please check uh, uh, the pulse of that patient and you will learn a lot from that patient. Okay, and we have a, 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 a anacrotic pulse, which is called parvus tardus. Uh, the parvus is low amplitude one, low amplitude, and a slow rising uh, and late peaking. Slow rising and late peaking. Uh, tardus means it's retarded. Uh, so it's a slow rising. It, it happened with critical AS, very severe one. And you can again uh, get this pulse in the calm baby like that patient in the shower hospital. 
uh, hyperkinetic pulse, this pulse kind of pulse is so big, peaking, uh, with a large volume. It's a rapid rising, high amplitude, and large volume. And in that case, we have wide pulse pressure. So the pulse pressure above 60 millimeter edge. So in that case, we have high output state like in anemia, fever, etc. So that's physiological one. Uh, and maybe in case of MR, when you have a large volume output, and in case of VSD, when you have again large volume uh, LV, because the LV become big. Uh, collapsing pulse, this is different one. Uh, collapsing, that's a rapid obstructing, that's different from the previous one. You see, there is a dichrotic notch here, but in the collapsing one, we haven't such a finding, right? So we have a rapid upstroking, round, uh, a rapid downstroking, and large, uh, large stroke volume is the same like here, but rapid rising, but there will be rapid lowering in the, uh, in the uh, collapsing, but a slightly slower lowering in hyperkinetic pulse. Okay, so in that case, we have AR, PDA, PDA case, uh, uh, and uh, AV fistula and any kind of the uh, rapid stroking out volume uh, if you have a very uh, large volume uh, cases. So in that case, you have a very abs uh, up stroking and down stroking with a large stroke volume. Pulses alternance mean there is a change in the pulse uh, amplitude between one pulse and another. That's happening with the Severe LV dysfunction 